All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Dark Side Technology Motherships mod, which is being made by form user Bad Sector. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a wonderful selection of 7.5 meter parts to build some 80s styled sci-fi spaceships and I really love the look of these parts they are pretty wonderful so let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what this does add in now before we start I should add this is still very much a work in progress it only just released a couple of days ago so hopefully we'll see some more parts in the future and some refinement of the existing ones but for now it is still a very cool and very useful usable pack. So let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake and then turn on our mod filter so we just have dark side technology and of course start with the command pods, the first of which being the DSTMS probe, which is an unmanned command pod with a data transmitter, reaction wheel SAS 1200, oh no, actually that's 12,000 electric charge, I can read, I swear, and mono propellant of 600. And well, it's um, gigantic. <laughs> It is 7.5 meters after all. It is a very, very big part. Now, perhaps not the most uh, interesting looking of things in the world, but hey, it's a probe core. I mean, most probe cores aren't honestly that fancy, but what is a lot more interesting is the MS command pod, which is, oh God, 14.4 tons. It can carry a capacity of four crew members, minimum of one, has the typical data transmitter reaction wheel, no SAS in this one, but it does have the typical crew report, 500 electric charge and 600 monopropellant. And look at the size of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Which you may be wondering, how does it not fit more Kerbals considering it, I mean four, four for this thing. We only carry three in here. Well, that's partly due to the fact that this is not exactly one solid command pod, which you can see if I open it. There we go. It actually opens in to some cargo bays that we have down here, which is awesome. I really love this. It's, you know, just an awesome ship that can open up its mouth and swallow things. That is just cool. Plus, you could put some science experiments in here or anything really that you'd like to fit inside of its giant maw, which is wonderful. So yeah, the actual command pod section really only is this top, though that being said, I think it could still fit a couple more crew members considering again, three four so but oh well it is still pretty cool now sadly it does not have a custom internal right now it uses the uh the stock shuttle internal hopefully we'll see a custom one in the future that would be pretty cool but for the time being it is at least nice to have a placeholder one and uh yeah that is the ms command pod in all of its 14.4 tons of glory now on to the fuel tanks where we have a variety of them again let's actually move this baby up because well some of these are big and zoom out now what we have here is four tanks of varying size we have the large tank here we then have a slightly smaller tank an even slightly smaller -er tank and then finally the smallest of the tanks now I'm not gonna go over their exact sizes of fuel etc because well uh, there's a lot of numbers here. As you can see, it's not just one type of fuel. You can actually use the interstellar fuel switch mod, which is a requirement for this to function, to actually switch between multiple different tank setups. So you can have liquid fuel and oxidizer, just liquid fuel, just oxidizer, monopropellant, or, or of course, xenon gas. And you can change all four of these different size tanks to which Whichever one of those you do prefer, which is quite nice. So you can switch those to just whatever your current situational needs are, which is pretty wonderful. So that is the gigantic tanks. Again, look at the size of these things compared to that tiny little capsule. 
Now, next up, we have an engine in here, which is the Atomic Engine 7.5 meter, which, again, is gigantic and gorgeous. I really do love the, uh, the look of this particular part. It is pretty cool. Now, it does, of course, have a built-in alternator that can produce up to 100 electric charge per second and has two different engine modes. If you want to use liquid fuel and oxidizer, you'll do a maximum of 5,000 kilonewtons of thrust, but at an engine ISP of 350. On the other hand, you can just burn liquid fuel only and get 1,800 100 kilonewtons of thrust, so a lot lower than the fuel and oxidizer, but at a higher engine ISP of max of 1500 in vacuum, and I actually messed up the number up here, that's 350 atmosphere, 455 max there in vacuum, and of course also does have 5 degrees of gimbling range, always handy. Now the next thing is in command and control, where we have a large 5-way RCS thruster block, let's uh... Zoom in on that one. A very cool, very large thruster block, which basically is the size of a Kerbal, and that's wonderful. Now let's move on to structural, where we have two different truss sections. Now these are actually a bit smaller than the 7.5 meter uh, size that the other parts are, as these are only five meters, which uh, as you can see there, a little bit smaller. But we have a uh, five by five meter and a two and a half by five meter truss section for your use with cargo or whatever your needs are. There we go, let's just pop those off. In coupling, we then have a number of different docking ports. Uh, the first being a five meter docking port here. We then have a 7.5 meter docking port, and then a radial docking port, which can go along the side, I mean it is radial after all, and is in that five meter size variety, which is pretty cool. Though, you know, with the attachment point, you don't exactly have to put it there, I guess, but hey, it is meant to be radial. Now next we have payload, where we have two different sized cargo bays, one being 5 meters in length, and the other being 15. Now they start, of course, open by default, but we can close them, and there we go, you have just a really gigantic uh, cargo bay there. For Really anything you could pretty much imagine you could fit inside that thing, and I especially like these, you know, when you have it, uh, say, whoop, hold on, I actually gotta scroll up more, there we go, grab that part again. I especially love these when you do actually add them to the back of the command pod, because then... Oh, just look at all that space. You could fly. You could have like a little shuttle craft docked in here, or fly it in. It's just wonderful. Now, we have nothing in aerodynamic, nothing in ground, and nothing in thermal. In electrical, we do have a 14 meter long solar panel, which we can pop right there. It bears striking resemblance to the one on uh, the SpaceX design, which, you know, is okay, I guess. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the sail sort of solar panels. I don't know why, I just prefer the, the you know, long, straight varieties. Just a personal preference, but still a good, functional solar panel. And then we have nothing until we get down to utility, where we do have a crew facility, which is, again, gigantic. There we go. Does hold a maximum of eight Kerbals, has a 2,000 electric charge, and will do a crew report. Now, again, I think you could probably fit a few more Kerbals in this thing, considering eight Kerbals in this giant thing. Three in there. Eight? Three, but still a very good part. I do like the uh, lights on this thing. It isn't quite symmetrical too, which I, I kind of like that on it. It uh, you know gives it a unique look. And we actually do have this ring right here, which is a spinning section. Now here in the VAB, it spins like a madman. Out in space though, it spins nice and slowly. So you do basically have a gravity section for your Kerbals, which is always good. Uh, sadly though, no internal view. We do have a placeholder where you have your Kerbals staring into the dark void, but hey, I mean, again, it's something. But that is all of the individual parts, so let's actually go out into the world and have a look at a ship I built with all these parts earlier. 
And I gotta say, I really do love the possibilities of what you can build with this thing. And, you know, growing up in the 90s, I did watch a lot of 80s sci-fi movies, so I love the 80-ish design of this stuff. It's just wonderful. So we have a little ship here that I don't know why I built trusses on these ends, but hey, we have trusses, we have the engine, we have the large solar panels, we can light up, of course, our ship there, open the great gaping maw of our ship, which is uh, wonderful. And I do like how it animates. It lowers down the center one first, then opens the others. Perfect. And again, you could build some sort of shuttle bay in here or have various cargoes, etc. The, you know, sky is pretty much the limit there. It is awesome. And a little bit harder to see here, but because of the light where we're at at the moment, but hey, let's turn on the spinning section, which as I did mention, does spin a bit more slowly out here in the world, so it's a bit more realistic, and I do like that. I always love a good gravity ring for use in this game. It is pretty cool. And uh, overall, just a wonderful little pack of parts. I mean, how could you not love this thing? It is some well-designed parts with good looks. I love the 80s styling, and I think a fun addition to any game. Game, though with their size, oh boy, they'll probably be quite uh, interesting to get into space, but you can create some very interesting ships once you do have them there. Uh, but yeah, that is really all I do have to show. Oh, I guess we could and should show off the engines, so let's fire those off. So there we go, that is the normal mode burning the liquid, oh, just the liquid fuel right now. And we can toggle the mode, so switch that over two burning liquid fuel and oxidizer, so we do have the two different uh, particle effects for that, which is good. So nice to see, and uh, overall, it's just fun. Ooh, I should probably add some radiators down there. That thing actually is heating up. Wonderful. You gotta love heat effects. But that is gonna be it for today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed. And if you do want to check out this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But, uh, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed. And you do come back for the next episode. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.